Are you worried about life after death? Well, if you're not, congratulations. You're way ahead of most people who ever lived. But if you are worried about what might happen after you die, then I hope this video might be useful to you. If we look at human history, our religions, and our culture, how they were structured and what they were motivated by, then it is quite obvious that the fear of what might happen after death was always quite the strong factor. There is no major religion, for example, which doesn't have some kind of image of what might happen to you after you die. And indeed, many people's commitment to their faith and religion is motivated by the fear of what happens after death. The basic idea being that if you accept a certain kind of God or if you follow a certain kind of teaching, you will surely be rewarded after death with some kind of heaven or better birth. Now in this video, I don't really want to explore very basic conceptions about heaven or hell. For example, that if you only accept the right faith, you will get eternal heaven, or that if you dismiss the correct God, you will receive eternal punishment. These kind of ideas are not very appealing to me, because they fall apart so quickly if you only examine the basic assumptions they make. They make very little logical sense to me, and I don't see too much value in exploring them further at this point. People who are interested in meditation and Eastern philosophy in general very often encounter the idea of reincarnation. And I would say, very often as well, they find the idea confusing. Or if not confusing, at least nonsensical. And I certainly get this reaction. Certainly, when I heard this concept of reincarnation for the first time, I lumped it in with childish notions of heaven and hell. I thought it was just as ridiculous. And indeed, there are forms of the idea of reincarnation which are quite silly. Assuming, for example, you will be reborn as a pig because of your bad deeds in this life. Seems quite ridiculous to me. Nevertheless, I do think there's a certain kind of truth to the idea of reincarnation. So let's explore what this truth might actually be. First of all, let me say that I get why for many people, especially from Western societies, the idea of reincarnation might seem so silly. I would say a vast majority of people in Western societies nowadays have this idea that the mind and even awareness in of itself is a product of the body. Matter therefore gives rise to awareness. We assume that there's this kind of duality and we assume that the mind therefore is the product of matter. If you have this belief, of course it is only consistent to think that when you die, when the body dies, the mind dies as well, awareness dies as well and with it all the mental activity that went along with it. And if you believe this, in some sense, there's no reason to be worried about life after death. There might of course be anxiousness, because you believe you won't exist anymore. But if this is your belief, at the same time, you're not worried in particular about what your experience, your life after death, might be like. There is, however, a different way of looking at reality. In one of my previous videos, I talked about a different model of reality, where awareness is primary. According to this model, awareness is fundamental. What we consider matter or the external world, therefore, is just the activity of this primary awareness. If you're interested in this idea, I will link the video where I talked about this more extensively, either here or in the description. Now before I proceed, I want to say a word of caution here. Usually my videos are only about what we experience firsthand, what we can learn to be true about ourselves from our own experience. This is hugely important to me, because I don't want to teach some kind of abstract philosophy. I want to convey something that can actually be verified by yourself and for yourself. As I proceed here, I will go more into the territory of speculation. Nevertheless, I do think my speculation here is somewhat well-reasoned and it can have useful implications for how you live your life or what you are worried about. So let us proceed. So the alternative model of reality, which makes awareness itself primary, kind of gives the idea of a reincarnation a little bit more life. What I call my life or the life of this body-mind, is, from this model, just a perspective that awareness takes. It is the activity of awareness itself, which takes the more concrete form of this body-mind. So what is the implication of this? It means that the body itself doesn't cause this experience that I have right now. According to this view, instead, the experience I have is an activity of awareness. The body, then, is just an image of this activity. This, in turn, means that when the body dies, the activity, even though it might change, doesn't necessarily go away. Let me use an analogy here to make this a little bit more clear. Let's visualize awareness, the fundamental reality, as a sea. 
and the individual body minds from which we live our lives are waves of the sea. This analogy makes clear that the body mind, which is represented as a wave, is not some kind of separate entity in of itself. Just like the wave is just an expression of the sea, so through the body mind is just the activity of awareness. The wave at some point is born in a sense, it rises out of the sea and then at some point it crashes and dissipates into the sea again. So to our body minds, we are born at some point, we live our life and then die. So what can this analogy teach us about life after death? I'm by no means an expert on waves, but for the sake of this analogy, let's assume that when the wave breaks and falls into the ocean, the energy of the wave doesn't disappear entirely. It continues to move the sea. At some point, another wave might then rise out of the ocean and the form this new wave takes might be shaped and influenced by the previous wave that broke into the sea. The previous wave that disappeared, therefore, in some sense, influences this new wave. So let us apply this idea to the death of our own body-mind. As I said, if we make awareness itself primary and the body-mind is just an activity of awareness, who's to say that this particular activity of awareness just disappears completely upon the death of the body? Is it possible that this activity, in some sense, persists? It might lose this particular form of the body-mind it previously had, but nevertheless, is it possible that it influences a new body-mind which then arises subsequently. There are different ways of imagining this process. We could imagine, for example, that as the body-mind disappears, it dissolves into this larger field of the universal mind. And the universal mind, in turn, gives rise to a new individual body-minds based on the contents it holds. The collective activity of the body-minds, therefore, influence what kind of new body-minds will then arise. Another way of imagining this process is that the body-mind, as it disappears, maintains a sort of more concrete shape. A new body-mind, which then arises, isn't so much influenced by the broader field of the universal mind, but instead, more so, is a continuation of a very particular body-mind which existed previously. This is sometimes visualized as one candle lighting the next one. The very same activity of mind or energies are therefore passed on to another body-mind. Both of these ideas, whatever one you find more plausible, therefore implicates that the state of the body-mind, as it disappears, can influence new body-minds, either in a very particular way or in a more broad, general way. Now having explained that, should you actually be worried about this process? Should the possibility that your body-mind might influence what happens down the road to other body-minds affect you in any way? make you fearful even? Well, my answer to that is definitely no. For one, influencing other body-minds is what you are already doing. Just by living this life, just by being what you are and doing what you do, you are already constantly influencing other body-minds, either in a good or a bad way. So from this point of view, your body-mind influencing others after death is not really that much different from what is happening right now. But much more essentially than that, awakening shows us that we essentially are not a body-mind. We essentially are awareness. We are not an individual wave that rises out of the ocean and one day crashes back into the ocean. No, we are the ocean itself. With this understanding comes the insight that no matter what happens, no matter how turbulent the ocean might become, you are always free and at peace. Because whatever happens is just the activity of your own being. And this being is already completely free, unlimited, dimensionless. Nothing that ever happens could harm it. It is always in the same perfect, unchanged condition. And it is always free to take another form. It is always free to express itself in a different activity. And when you realize that, you see that to your true nature, the ideas of life and death don't even apply. There is only this, your eternal being. So what's there to worry about, really? I hope you found this exploration of life after death interesting and useful. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support me, do check out the links in the description. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with my latest videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you here next time.